welcome to GDB World. In today's video, we'll be taking a look at how you can make this procedural roof tile and Sizzlements Designer. If you enjoyed today's video and wish to support the channel, please like and subscribe. And with that, let's get straight into the video. To start us out, we're going to make a 4K graph, and then we're just going to follow the standard sort of setup, uh, plugging all the nodes into their blend node here. Then we're going to make our tile base. This is made up of with a shape node, and we're going to blend that in with a gradient linear 3. We're going to be creating some pinching of the trapezoid grayscale node, and then blending our gradient linear 3 with a non uniform blur grayscale, just to soften the high points a little bit. Finally, we're going to use that input with a directional warp 90 degrees, and then about 50 intensity. What we're doing here is we're just using the shadows node to create uh, the lip part of the tile. And then we're going to blend our own grayscale with this lip, just so that we have a little bit more control about how the shape sort of uh, deforms and uh, is created at a base level. Whenever you're using a directional warp, you just make sure that we're warping it in the same direction and for the same value. That just ensures that we don't get any artifacts when we're blending the two together. Finally, we're gonna wanna just do the non uniform blur grayscale again and that's just to soften the edges to make sure they blend a little bit because it's sometimes a little bit too harsh especially when you're making up the grayscale transition finally we want to maintain that sort of rounded shape of the tile so we're just going to blend in a directional warp with a gradient linear one again using the same direction as before with the same intensity and then finally we should be able to blend that with the original shape. Once we've got that, we're just going to make three different versions of this tile. You can spend as much time as you want on it, it just depends how much variety you're looking for. The trapezoid node's a really cool one just to make some quick changes to the base shape. And then we're going to be using the tile sampler node for the tiling of these uh, patterns here. So just set the x amount to 13 and then the y amount to 10. Increase that pattern amount and then we'll start plugging in our tiles. We're going to decrease the distance between each tile, so just increase that scale over the one value. Finally, the main major thing that we're actually doing is we're using the previous pattern shape as a mask input. And we're essentially making it so that these tile samplers are the new base shape. So we're just gonna create another tile sampler and we're gonna be using this to create the final tile. So just increase the amount to like three and four. And then we're just gonna to have to go ahead and adjust that scale just to close in that gap. Plugging this into our blend node there just so everything's all connected and we can see it visually. Just gonna add a little bit of randomness by changing that position and offset slightly. Just whatever feels right. And adjust that color random a little bit just to add a little bit of height disparity between it. And we're using the Perlin noise with displacement intensity and we're just going to expose that value to be used in the inspector. We start moving to some finer details with the aging. So we're going to use a slope for grayscale for clouds one. 
put it on a min mode, put the sample to 32, and then just put something really tiny, like 0.01. Blend it for the original shape, just to make sure we're maintaining the uh, original silhouette. Then using an Edgetect, we're going to focus on the details that we produced, and then blend that again with a uh, multiplier, just decreasing the opacity to control it. And then we can move on to the cracks. So just making a quick version of the cracks that I normally make. So I'm just going to use the cells one, and then we're going to push in a slope blur here of the clouds one, making sure we set that mode to min, so then it subtracts into the darker lines. And then we're going to use a directional warp with yet another pearl and noise. Can be using a series of slope blurs just to transform the shape slowly um, into sort of what we're going for. So this time we're using a fractal sum base. And then yet another directional warp, but this time we're going to warp it with the original shape just to ensure that the cracks aren't lining up and don't look too uniform. Transform 2D just to control the size, and then that gets blended in with the original shape. And then finally we can work on a crack mask. So using a histogram scan in junction with the edge detect, we're going to create separate cells, which we're then going to push into a flood fill, and then finally into a flood fill random grayscale. Controlling that for the levels, and then put that into an opacity mask and you can sort of see it will scatter the cracks more randomly for us. Now we move on to making the filler. So this is going to be a sort of concrete style of filler. Um, we're going to be using a slope blue grayscale with two grunge maps. I'm using grunge 13 and 4. Blue those two together with a slope blur and then we're going to push it into another one, sample size 13. And we want that intensity to be quite low, like 0.01. This will just slowly bubble it out a little bit and then um, into yet another one but this time we're going to use the fractal sum. For a directional warp we're just using feel and noise because it gives us a nice sort of organic flow almost like it's melting a little bit. Then using transform 2D uh, we're going to blend that shape with itself and we're just going to subtract it just to remove some of those darker values. Finally we're going to be pushing into a normal map and then a curvature smooth. So we're gonna actually have two output nodes for this one. So just push the one prior to the normal map into a blur. So the purpose of this output is to subtract the concrete from the original shape, just so that it's not overlapping. Go ahead and create a frame over the top of that blend node and call it diffuse start, because we'll come back to this one later. Um, and then finally we're going to use a height blend to overlay our uh, filler into the shape. Then we're going to blend in our curvature smooth just as a multiplier over the top of the entire shape. Then you can get some concrete on top of the tiles as well, but just lightly. Then we move on to making a moss, so this just starts out as a shape, make it a disc. Uh, shrink that disc down into sort of a blade-like shape and then we're going to use the trapezoid node to turn it to a blade of grass. Blend it up for gradient linear one. Then into a peel and noise with a directional warp. This just gives it its organic shape. And then finally we're ready to put that into our tile sampler node. Then we're going to set up our inputs to be used with the tile sampler. So we're going to use another shape, it's going to be a fawn. Okay, normal map with it, set it to 3 with a blend node and an uh, invert grayscale. 
Finally, we can plug in those maps. And then just put a whole bunch of sort of random values. Um, essentially, your goal is to make a patch of grass. It'll look more like a patch of grass when you increase that masking value. See how mine sort of looks like fine hairs. So I sort of come back to the base shape um, after adjusting the scale a little bit just to fatten it up a little bit. Finally, once you're happy, go ahead and make a copy of that tile sampler and just change the random seed a little bit to give you some different results. With the next tile sampler, you can kind of just put whatever values feels right to you. Once we're happy, we're going to have to handle the distribution. So to handle that, we're going to be using a grunge map 4. And we're going to be plugging that into the mask threshold of our tile sampler. Then we're going to randomize our noise even further by using the tile generator. So this is a cool little technique that I saw on Pinterest. Um, so I'm just sort of copying the values there, but you can kind of just do whatever feels right. Again, it doesn't really matter. It's not really a science for it. You could also probably expose a lot of these values if you want to change how it distributes overall as well. Finally, we're just blurring that a little bit just so it's not as harsh. And then we're going to blend that with yet another grunge just to remove some of the values a little bit. Plug that into our mask threshold and reduce that down to probably around about 50%. And then we're going to, going to work on our finer noise. This is sort of the medium shapes, I guess. So this is just. Um, a whole bunch of black and white spots and fractal sums and um, all those sorts of things just blurred together until you get this sort of bellowed out look. Once you sort of got this cloudy circular noise, we're just going to blend that in with our uh, moss that we created before, so the bigger shapes, and it's just going to sit there sort of more in the background, be a little bit uh, of a more subtle moss. Now we're just creating another variant of it that's just going to be a little bit more noisy. Now we're ready to start sort of blending these two together. So we're going to be using our masking uh, moss that we created beforehand. We're going to leave the first blend node just on a copy, just at a 100% or 1, just to begin with. And then as we're sort of blending it with the original shape, you can come back and uh, tweak it as you um, sort of see fit. Finally, we're ready to start sort of adding this in with our original shape. Just grab your blend node, 
put it into a max lighten and then we're gonna wanna sort of create like a clipping mask sort of thing for it. So just grab your original shape, put in our moss and subtract it and then plug that into your opacity. And that's gonna become our new output. With that done, we're done with our heights and then we can work on our color nodes. So the color is very simple. So we're just taking gradient map, dragging it across an image to give us some values. And then we're blending that um, with an HSL node just to control it a little bit further. And rinse and repeat for each element. So you're gonna to wanna to do one for the tiles, one for the concrete, and then two for the moss itself. One with sort of more greener values and one with maybe more dead brown values. That being done, I then moved on to creating the roughness map. So it's nothing too fancy, just the most notable thing is make sure you separate out a separate mask for your tiles and the um, moss itself. That way you can more freely uh, change the organicness of the material. Um, with that being said, that about does it for today's video. If you enjoyed today's video, please like and subscribe. And I hope you have a lovely day.